hide and then back to here. Okay. So angular velocity. What doesn't matter in angular velocity? The length, the radius of it. Okay. So if you're going 41 revolutions per minute, it's super easy to change it into radians per minute. How do you do that? Multiply by? 2 pi radians. radians over 1 revolution. And so 2 pi times 41, you get an answer. Okay? Once you get that answer, somebody take 2 pi times 41 really quick, please, and round it to the nearest tenth. 80. No, it's more than 80. Yeah, I, I forgot to multiply it by pi. 257.6. Okay, so that's radians per minute. Then, if it's a 6-point-inch diameter record and we want to find inches per minute, I have to change that 6-point-inch diameter into a radius. How do I do that? Divide by two, so it's a 3.45 inch radius. So you take inches over radians because a radian is a radius, same length. Multiply that and you get your answer. Okay? All right, good enough. A Ferris wheel built for an exposition held 2,100 people, had a diameter of 251 feet, and took 30 minutes to make one revolution. Find the linear velocity of somebody riding on it. Now, up there, you have three numbers, 2,100 people, diameter 251 feet, 30 minutes. Uh, which one doesn't really matter out of those numbers? The number of people. It doesn't matter how many people can ride on it, okay? It matters the diameter for linear velocity and how long it takes. So if it took, takes 30 minutes per one revolution, you go one revolution per 30 minutes because revolutions always has to start on the top. Not always, but has to start on the top if you're finding linear velocity. And then, of course, you take two pi radians per one revolution. And then you have radians per minute, so then you have to take it times the radius. If the diameter is 251, what's the radius? 125.5 and that's feet per radius and now you have feet per minute and then you just to get rid of your minutes in one minute there is 60 seconds boom boom okay so then you have feet per second you just multiply and divide and you got it okay Table saw problem. Do I need to do another table saw problem for you? No? Okay. Um, printing press roller, 15 inches of diameter. The speed at the roller surface is 52 feet per second. What's the angular speed? 52 feet per second is a linear velocity. We got to get it into radians per second. So to get it into radians, it involves the radius. Now, printing press has a roller of 15 inches in diameter, so it's 7.5 inches in the radius. Now, I got to get feet to inches. Well, in one foot, there's 12 inches. And then I have to change inches into radians, so I do the radius. So inches has to go on the bottom. So 7.5 inches goes on the bottom in one radius. Inches and inches cancel, feet and feet cancel. I have radian, radians per second, okay? So you gotta look where you're converting to, where you're converting from to figure out where each one goes. Um, one revolution every 5,800 hours find the linear speed in miles per hour well i know there's two pi radians in one revolution and the radius is 4000 
So 4,000 miles over one radius. Okay. Those are all fairly straightforward. 17 is a little different. Okay, this certain planet, it's not Earth because it only takes 20 hours for it to make one revolution. Okay? So, the angular velocity is the same whether you're vol revolving up here at point A or if you're revolving right here at the equator. You're still making one revolution every 20 hours. And to change it into uh, radians per hour, we just multiply by 2 pi radians over one revolution. 2 goes into 20 10 times, so it's pi over 10 radians per hour. Okay? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. What is the linear velocity at point A? Now, what's the radius of the planet from the center mark at point A? Because the radius of the planet would be 3950. But we have to go from the center mark. Find that radius. Okay. Well, to figure that out from geometry, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. 45, 45, 90 triangle. If we know the hypotenuse, because in our 45, 45, 90 triangle here, our hypotenuse is 3950. To get from the hypotenuse to the side, we do what? Divide. We divide by the square root of 2. Because going from the side to the hypotenuse, we multiply by the square root of 2. From, so from hypotenuse to side, we divide by the square root of 2. Somebody on a calculator take 3950 divided by the square root of 2. Still probably going to be over 3,000. Oh. 2,793.1 miles is the radius at point A. It's not the radius from the center of the planet, but it's a radius from the center line between the two poles. And that's, that's the radius that we have to work with in this problem. So then you just take the angular velocity times the radius, 2793.1, and then you figure it out, okay? Okay, there's a belt moving around these two pulleys at 20 feet per second. So at point B, what's the linear velocity at that point? Well, does the belt change speeds from point A to point B to point C? No, it's the same speed. So it's going 20 feet per second in all the points. Wherever it's at, it's going 20 feet per second. But depending on how big the roller is or how big the pulley is, that's where the angular speed changes. So if you have a linear velocity of 20 feet per second, and we want to find point B. Well, if we want to find the angular velocity, that's in inches. So we need to change the feet to inches. So in one foot, there's 12 inches. Feet are gone. Now it's inches per second. And then to find the angular velocity, we put the radius. So we get radians per second and get rid of inches. Well, it has a six inch radius. Okay, so you just multiply. It works out to be 40 radians per second. Okay, and then point C, you've figured out with the eight in there. Last one that you'll do today is you're working with a bicycle. Now, a 10 speed bicycle, why is that easier to ride than just an, or how? Why is it more efficient to ride a 10-speed bicycle than just a normal bicycle? 
Do you change gears? And with the gears, if you've ever looked at the gears of a 10 speed bicycle, there's bigger gears and littler gears. Since this is big and this is little, there's a mechanical advantage. You learned in physical science, there's a mechanical advantage involved, okay? So here we have a mechanical advantage because there's 52 teeth at the chain ring and only 13 teeth at the cog. What's our mechanical advantage? What's 52 divided by 13? Card players would know this by heart. Four, because there's 13 cards in a suit and four suits in a deck of cards, okay? So your mechanical advantage is four. So if you're spinning or if you're biking at one revolution per second with your pedals, you have to take that times a mechanical advantage of four. So back here, the cog is going at four revolutions per second. Because the chain doesn't change speed just like this pulley, the belt on these pulleys didn't change speed. Your chain is going at the same speed that it's going. But because of your mechanical advantage, your back wheel goes that much faster. So you're at four revolutions per second, and then you just do the math to figure out how many miles per hour you go. Then you just go, well, if I'm at four revolutions per second, take it to by radians per one revolution times um, 23 inch diameter is an 11.5 inches per one radius. And that's inches per second. And then to change it into miles per hour, multiply by 12 inches in one foot times 5,280 feet in one mile. Take it times there are 60 seconds in one minute. Take that times 60 minutes in one hour. Minutes and minutes cancel. Seconds and seconds cancel. Inches, inches cancel. Feet, feet cancel. And we're in miles per hour. And you do the math. Okay? So that's the basics of your second assignment. You've got a lot of the same problems from the first assignment. You're just doing them again so you understand get that much more practice at it, and then you get into the more complicated problems. So I doubt any of you will get finished during this class period. At least you have study hall with nothing to do, right? <laughs>